All right, let's take a look at WIC2. If this is the first time you've opened it up, it generally will come up with a WIC2 configuration. You can uh, generally change any of these options here. We're going to go ahead and click OK. It's going to load the uh, NIC2 database, the Google Hacking database. We can go over to the HTTP header, modify things there needed. The main thing that we're looking for here is the SPUD API. It's going to be located wherever you install it, but if you're using the defaults with SPUD, it's under Program File, Sense Post, Sense Post, SPUD. Once that happens, you click on the Start SPUD. Now remember, SPUD is going to be used instead of the Google API. Since Google does not hand those out anymore, SPUD kind of bypasses that and allows you to use it. Uh, you can enable proxy if you have one running. You can also change some spidering information here, timing, update sites, what to start up. If you wanted to start up, always start with the wizard and so forth, and of course some help information as well. Now, when it comes to WIC2, just keep in mind that WIC2 will not look for SQL injection problems, authorization problems, and so forth on a website. It's not a scanner, so it's not going to find ports and so forth to see if it's firewalled and all, all that. But it operates between those two levels, generally. It tries to find interesting directories and files on the website, looks for sample scripts and so forth that can be abused, or finds vulnerabilities within the web server implementation itself. So when we're looking at WIC2, make sure that you have WinHTTrack installed, which allows you for web mirroring. Make sure you have HTTPrint installed, which is basically going to act as a web server fingerprinting tool. And here it will look for different directories and so on. And the, again, the system configuration that we looked at, you basically have your different options. Uh, even under your uh, proxy settings on the older versions, you used to have, this is where your Google API comes in and such. So let's take a look at some of these options and how to utilize it. So let's uh, go over here to the spider and let's see what we can get going. So what we want to do here is we want to type in a domain name. In this case here, I'm going to put in mile2.com. We can run on port 80 and we're just going to hit start. And as it goes out, it's able to come back with some information. Tells you what the directories are that are mined and any external links, which can be very useful. So if you notice here, we have, you know, like a slash calendar, we have slash images, slash users, scripts, articles, and so on. So we got a lot of information that we may have not have gotten directly from the site links and so on. So while that's running, let's go on to the next section and see what we can find under the Googler option. Now, like the mirroring tool, the Google option will find directories on the site. And it does it more so by using keywords. So here, what we're going to do is type in mile2.com. And on the keywords, we can pretty much look for anything that has to do with you know, security, something like that, or anything else that you want to put in there. Uh, CPTS, CPTE, you know, whatever. We're going to let that run and see what it comes up with. Another thing we can utilize, too, while this is running is Google Hacks. And here we want to load the Google Hacking database. So here loaded our 1467 entries. And now we can actually go in and put in the website address. And then run it from there. And then what it's going to do, it's going to go out and uh, try all of these different types of uh, interests that we have within the Google Hacking database and try each one of those on the website of choice that you have there. So it's, it's definitely very uh, useful. And it does all that for you automatically, which is pretty cool. So awesome stuff. Now back end. It's another one we can look at here. With the back end, it's pretty pretty straightforward. Here we try to find interesting files and directories on the web server. The thinking is that the web server might have a secret directory, but it's not linked to any page on the server, and it would possibly show up on the mirror. Maybe, maybe not. The same goes for administrative back end interfaces. So the concept here can be further extended to files as well. So we have a list of directories of the web server. We can start looking at interesting files 
and such as well. So it, it has a kind of a default in there that you can utilize. Now you can configure the directories and files that you want to check, but WIC2 does come with its standards there. You can go in, for instance, and choose a, a category down here under the extension, such as uh, sewer default, standard, quick, full. Let's go ahead and run a quick here. We can also run the update from sense post, and you can see here what the directories it will check uh, for us. Again, we put in our target. We can also have some other types of trigger controls that you can put in as well. And we're going to go ahead and just run it from here and see what it comes up with. If you notice here, the uh, progress bar will give you the progress on the directories and then also the files. So let's check it out real quick and see what we got. We can actually see that there is a logs directory. So let's see if we can actually go to that logs directory. So here we're going to type in mile2.com logs. Ah, now look at this. We actually get an error. It says index of logs. Tell us what version it's actually running. So it's in this case here we got some nice banner grabbing information. Now another thing we noticed is that there's a robots.txt file. So now what we can do is we can actually utilize that. There we go. Here we have under the mile2.com site, we have a robots.txt file, which basically tells us all of the disallow of the modules that will, as in directories, that it will not allow you to uh, search. So even when Google comes up and searches the web pages and the website, uh, it will check the robots.txt file. In this case here, it will not actually browse through and index the folders that are in the robots.txt and here specifically under the disallow. So what we could do, for instance, is try some of these. Let's say the administrator here. We pop that in there. Keep in mind, generally every website will have this. And here we go. Now we have a uh, Joomla website. Uh, administrator, we, now all we need to do is, is figure out what the username and password is. And from there, we're able to then hopefully get in and uh, make some changes. So keep in mind, this is why we have uh, the robots text files out there to basically say, okay, hey, if anybody's spidering my website, I don't want them to show up anything in these directories. And as you can see, each website will actually have these. So let's uh, just try a different website, for instance. Let's try uh, CNN.com, for instance. And as you can see, there's also a robots.txt file in the CNN that also tells us what all the disallowed ones are. And again, you can basically go in there and say, hey, look, we have a disallow virtual. Let's see what happens when we pop this in here. And depending on what they have in that directory, if they have an index HTML file or a default page file that will bl uh, show up, then you may see something or you may not see anything. So again, this is going to be pretty common with different websites and the information. This is again where you can see how WIC2 can be a very useful tool when it goes out there and finds this information for you. And uh, it's, it's definitely great when you're trying to fingerprint and trying to find out what web servers are holding, what they're trying to hide. And it's definitely a cool thing. So there you have it. There you are. And try it out with some of the other web uh, sites out there. Try it with your company's website and see what you get out there. Pretty cool stuff. All right, now let's look at the, the while this is still running, let's look at the WIC2 tab here. Now, WIC2 component within here, you need to have a, a little bit of understanding of what NIC2 is. Now, NIC2 is basically going to be a text-based web server vulnerability scanner written in Perl. NIC2 scans over 3,000 potential problems on a web server. There's a whole other section that we can get into using just NIC2. But here, what we're doing with WIC2 is we're able to go out there and actually perform fuzzy logic on the responses and then greatly reducing the occurrence of false positives. Also has the ability to import directories from both backend miner and Googler. So here we go. So what we want to do here is we basically want to go in and figure out what we want to do. We have our spidering we can bring in. We have our backend. We have our NIC2 entries and so forth that we can bring in. As you can see, since it's still going, it may not come up with 
with a lot of results at the moment because it's still scanning. But what we can do here is just uh, type in mile2.com and see what we get back. All right. We can load the NIC2 database as well. And here it should load it. Great. So here we have uh, almost 3,000 tests that we can scan with it as well. And let's get it started. So it's going to go through and it's uh, going to go through all of the uh, NIC2 entries and then give us the results of those as it finds it. Okay, while this is running, let's take a quick look at the scan wizard. Now, if this is the first time you're running WIC2 and you're not sure what to set on settings and so forth, what you can do is you can actually use the wizard and the wizard will uh, kind of step you through the process of, of basically what we did manually here. So here you can put in the host name. You can say if it's HTTP or, H or HTTPS. You can put in the uh, uh, port number that's listening on if it's uh, host internet facing. You then go to the configuration. Is you know are you using a s proxy server to access the host? Proxy server IP address if you needed it. You can start Spud from here also. Confirm your settings and then it gives you an overview. And you finish up, and then from there, it basically goes through the same process that we kind of went through on a more manual route when it came to actually starting it up. All right, so we've kind of gone through, we've kind of seen Spider, we saw Googler, and as you can see, it's still querying that. We saw back end, and you can see again some of the results we've gotten back. It's still in progress. We have uh, WIC2, Again, this is still running, uh, the NIC2 results from the database there. We saw Google Hacks and the results. So far, everything looks good. We have our system configuration where we can actually set up the different types of settings. Uh, importantly, of course, it's going to be the uh, SPUD API on finding where that's located, proxy setting if you have any, and also uh, if you have the database locations, which generally are going to be on the default in the SensePost WIC2 database folder and that's where you get that from. You can definitely spend a lot of time on this and get some good use out of it, so check it out and let us know what you think about it. If you find anything very nice and interesting in regards to the websites that, that you're trying to protect, then you know again, this might be a very good tool to go out there and just look at and see what's readily available. And then of course we also looked at the manual way of going about it, where we can actually go in and take a look at what's allowed and what's disallowed. And again, this would be more of the manual way of going about it and checking things out. Cool. All right, let's take a look at our next section.